Hello everybody and welcome back to Angmar and uh, before we get started in earnest let's just have a look at the comments to the previous video. Dabba Krada said uh, you could name a city in honour of the Warg skirmishers. Um, I think that's a good idea and I've already had a think about this and I think Morvatarth is one that can certainly get renamed and uh, we're going to call it Warg. Warren because I do like a little bit. I don't know if that actually makes sense because <laughs> Warren I think I think is that is that where rabbits live? Oh, I don't know it but it fits nicely in in terms of the alliteration so that's uh, we're going with that <laughs> If any of you have other suggestions then of course we have a lot of settlements that we can absolutely change the names of and Troll for Jokes, aka Bradley Hopkins, I know who you are. If the Witch King dies, where does he respawn? Well, he does not respawn with us. So if he dies, um, he's currently, where is he? He's over here. Yeah, so if he dies, he goes straight back to Mordor, I believe. And then, you know, he continuously gets respawned Barador for them. Uh, if indeed they still hold it, which they do. I mean, they'll never lose it. So we can no longer regain him. Either, uh, well, I believe that's how it is. But whatever the uh, situation is, we will never be able to have him respawn for us. So once he's gone, he's gone. And then finally, Jar Jar Binks asked, Can you explain what Pike animation is and why it's better? And... I've already kind of explained this in terms of words, but what better way than to show it in battles? Do we have all, any pikes here? Oh, drat. No, we don't. <laughs> um, do we? Oh, where's this? All right, here we go. Do we have pikes in here? We do. So perhaps we when we fight Lord. here, this we'll be able to show them Lord. off. Oh, they got so many Dunedain volunteers. Um, How long does it before oh, nine turns well yes they might come out and attack us and then we can show the uh, pikemen in action regardless that is their final settlement so once they're down they are down and then we'll have uh, obviously of course they'll be down so we'll have someone else to uh, focus on yes but Let's go and take out Captain Oz. Uh, Captain Oz here, he comes with a ballista, some Dunedain Rangers, and journeymen. We don't see too many of them, but they are crossbows. I, I think we actually have seen them quite a few times. And one of my favourite units, the Watch Shiris. I mean, not to use, obviously, because they're absolutely atrocious, but <laughs> you know what I mean. Anyway, let's... Uh... If we night attack, oh no. I don't really want him to show up, but let's go in like this then. Attack! Here on the battlefield, in front of Bornost Erain, we shall, um, well, we're going to smash some Brelanders. And we've got the ballista, I forgot about this, but this is what an orcish ballista looks like. So if you were to wear, it looks a bit different. It's got this pallet on the front, but otherwise I think it is exactly the same. And then of course we've got orcs manning the thing. And uh, and here are some Iron Crown Longbowmen. And you should indeed fear the Iron Crown. I can't really get the... <laughs> I think that's a decent enough view. But we have obviously covered all of this in the... Uh, oh, I did a video on it. Oh, are they coming towards us? It does look like that. I mean, the blister is firing. Right. Yeah, they're going to come towards us. So go into loose formation and run out to there. And then you fellas, you come over here. You're going to go into loose formation in a short while. Because of course we don't want to block the ballista and get several of our men impaled. Which is perhaps going to happen very shortly. Just shoot at the uh, rangers. Shoot the rangers. They're the only thing we really need to worry about I suppose today. So the first one... Go after them, you go after them, you go after them, and all of you, just go over there. Oh, well, they've got the ballista over there. Are we firing a twill? Yes, we are. It's good to see. And it does look like those units coming from the town, they are... Um, they're... They're um, AI control. 
I can't get my words out today, can I? <laughs> right, so you two just go in, attack them. I mean, we'll catch them eventually, those pesky buggers. Those little midgets. Nothing, nothing against vertically challenged people, but, you know, that's something against them. <laughs> right, we can stop firing with that. I don't want to cause any unnecessary deaths. And all of you, shoot the Dunedain Rangers. How are we doing over here? We can go into tight formation. Even though we're trash, we can certainly beat their trash. I mean, eventually, you'd think. How are we doing on the percentages? Very well, 41%. We've caught all these baggers. Yes, do kill them all. And um, Drangu, you come over here. And we're going to charge those Dunedain Rangers. Actually, uh, probably didn't really want to bring them in. Because if they take any shots, I'll be really miffed. Be pretty miffed. Yeah, these guys are now taking damage. Right, Drangu though. You go on in there. Uh, we've got our Hillmen bulk over there, ready to receive. These guys shoot. Shoot the watch sheriffs. Shoot them. Shoot them now. And yeah, I mean these guys just come over here to for the you know the, the enemy morale bonus or buff. No, I'm saying the completely wrong word here. Behold, Nerf. And uh, well, that's the end of that then. That was quick. Didn't have to see me suffer with pronunciate. <laughs> I can't speak English. Uh, didn't have to suffer through me trying to speak the correct word. Right, there we go. Let's speed this up. And I think that's enough. This clear victory. Clear we victory. we lost a few men, but it was widely in the hill, man. Yes. So we can just leave it there. And we shall execute them. And this is... Uh, I shouldn't sound so jovial about executing folk, but, uh, you know, they're, they're hobbits. They can, they can take it. So, what we must do with Drangu, I think, yes, is kind of sweep away all these forces over here. Now, Reginard is... He's got cell swords, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So, he's got two units of cell swords there. What do we have in here? Right, well... Mm, we could potentially beat them with what we've got there, Lord but I don't really see... Oh, no, they could come and attack us, of course, because Kamduat over here, that is... That's weird. Oh, because they must be blocking it. Right. Well, uh, <laughs> excuse me for that brief yes. moment of, uh, I don't know, stupidity. So we're going to go into that fort there. Depending on, what, depending on what happens here, Captain Dell is going to get smashed along with Nikki and Ted. And then Reginard will get uh, destroyed in due time. And then we're going to come round with Drangu, take back Kamduath or Anuminas. And then we're going to go Hobbiton and uh, Deep Hallow. I don't know if Deep Hallow is still in the game. I think Deep Hallow was the one that was here. Or maybe it was the one here. I don't know. Um, but whatever the third Shire region is over here, and then we'll go for Mickle Delving, finally. Right, but if they do come over here, that'll be a bit of annoying, uh, a nuisance, since, you know, we you. kind of want to move out. We've got the plan of going to smash the dwarves in one turn. That is the plan for today. And should we go and attack that, or shall we wait for all of them to come up? I think it'll be a more interesting battle if we take them all out, uh, don't you? Rather than having two separate ones. So I think that's what we're going to go for. More Holt, how would you like to come and join the party? So you're going to come out with all of them. Ooh, that's not a good, not a good look at all, is it? So who can we leave behind? If we left... Who's not going to be useful? How about that? Well, I mean, those cell swords... Your will, my lord. As you wish. I mean, semi-useful. Yes. Okay, how lord. about... Listen up. I mean, there's only 30 of them. Is that even going up? I don't think it is. Your oh, this is rubbish. As you wish. Still 50%. Yes, oh, I think Morholt has to stay in there. 55. Okay, let's just send lord, everyone back lord. in there. What's the highest we get? 55%. Garth Elagoth, how much do you like us? Oh, you like us quite a lot now, don't you? Hmm. 
Well, we've got some units in here that we could certainly bring out. I mean, just about 80%. That's okay. We've got 10% to play with there. So let's just bring these guys over here. And Morholt might have to stay in there. Which is a bit of a pain. Because, well, let's have a look at the public order. So 15, 50% is cultural unrest. Well, I mean, that is... That is slowly being cured, and once it has been, then we will be able to move out from there. But with the remainder of the money then, is there anything that we particularly need to build? Now, we do want that advanced armorer, but with it taking that long, I don't really want to put that in. Uh, how much does that speed things up? 25%, what's the current one? The current one is speeding things up by 15%. Um, I mean, we're going to get that anyway, so let's just put that in. Uh, we don't necessarily need the highest tier, but we certainly want the second tier. And Mount Graham, you're kind of on the back burner for now. We just want some of our top quality units. Who's got... Who's got a barracks? Oh, those guys can come over here. We'll, we'll retrain them for the armor. So I think we're going to send them out in that direction. Same with these as well. They're going to Kandum, get some nice armor. Where do we have some barracks? Oh, here's one. Oh, so next turn, we can get some quality units there. And, oh, we've just built one here as well by the looks of it. So that's coming along nicely. Let's just get... I mean, we can we can fill this out with some hillmen, send them for Drangu, because he's actually in need of some extra units. So let's do that. And, oh, that is actually all of our money. Oh, it's looking not too bad. I'd expect us maybe to get attacked in some of these regions, but let's go for an end turn. Osgiliath is lost! OMG! Good. And, uh, yeah, that's us. I'm not the biggest fan of, you know, like, you get those constant messages popping up about these certain locations getting attacked. Like, I'm not the biggest fan of that. I don't really care. Barhaleg. And you're becoming a large town. Excellent. So we can get... Oh, we actually already can get roads. I can't remember what comes with large town. In fact, let's just have a look. Let's just have a look. Why not? And... Oh, we'll be able to get to the top tier of the armorer. And... We won't get to the top tier of the barracks. But that doesn't really mean a whole lot. It just means we can't get north guard. But... Um, yeah, roads you can get with a town. Okay. And, yeah, it's sad to see that the Witch King's Hall and the Orc Pit, they're just, they're just awful. <laughs> just, like, why would I bother getting them? And, uh, yeah, we just don't get a melee weapon bonus from anywhere. I find that absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> uh, knock for a claw, then. That did get, wait, what did I get? A smoking house. Oh, I thought it was a barracks. Barquetta got a land clearance. Awesome land clearance, rather. And those Brelanders appear to have gone back. So, oh, look at that. They've got a merchant. Those bloody buggers have got a merchant. Oh, yeah, because some factions now can get merchants. I think you can only get one, and you get them from the Merchant's Guild. That's a new feature from version 4. Point, well, 0, and also version 4.5. And, uh, obviously, Breland, one of the most well-known merchants, or merchant nations. They're not really a nation, but, you know, you'd imagine there are a lot of merchants that come around here. So that makes thematic sense. But, Barketta, then, let's get you absolutely nothing, because I don't want to spend any money on you. <laughs> Hillmen camp over here, and bam, bam, smack them right there. And, actually, let's just get rid of this. I don't want to keep hearing that. It is very useful, um, I think, to have, um, especially as the realm grows, you don't have to then, you know, flit around a lot. So get land clearance there, small amounts of money. Those dwarves, we're going to smash them. Oh, and Baridon Yonak, I think, was the other one that got... Uh, I don't know. Oh, no, it was Dead Man's Dyke, wasn't it? We just got the Temple of Melkor. That has gone to 52%. And, oh, yeah, we already figured that one out. Okay. I am slow today. 
But let's just take out Reginard, shall we? He comes with two units of cell swords. What do we have in terms of armor piercing? Oh, we've got the Barrowites. We can just throw them in, can't we? Right, off we go. We attack! But this is actually a bit of a key battle because uh, Reginard... Was it Reginard or Reginald? I think it's Reginard. And he is a unique general that the Brelanders only get one time. It's a one-time thing. Many of you perhaps haven't played as Bree before, so you might not know this, but you do get a choice between siding with the Dunedain or siding with, like, the mercantile trade system. Basically, what you would get uh, from the Dunedain is some of their units, and if you go for the mercantile system, you gain access from your, uh, from your inns, I think. Or was it from... I think it's actually from your uh, um, culture building. You can then train all, like, map-wide mercenaries, like, for the good nations. You can't get Barun mercs, I don't think. But you can get Herondor mercenaries and things like that. And they replenish in these regions that you've built the infrastructure in. And they replenish depending on how far away um, they have come. Which, obviously, makes sense. It's a similar thing to how... Um, how Gondor have the fief fiefdom units, so some of them take a bit longer to get to you, things like that. Right, but, and we go with the Barrow Whites, they are our armor piercing unit, everyone else is just our trash over here, and I think, are you, are you firing at will? No, you're not. Right, Drangu, because you're a bit of a beast, let's bring you in on these 113. You better not die in the charge. We've actually lost a Barrowite, I think. We had 57. So these Salsors, they do not mess around. 110, there were. Let's see how many Drangu took out. With his... He's, he's, not, he's not a charging cavalry unit. But he did take out about 50 of these Salsors in that charge. So, you know, pretty decent. And those Barrowites have handled all of them pretty well. Let's give him another charge, shall we? So, yes, this is probably Bree's finest general. The generic Breland general is actually pretty good. They are armor-piercing and they've got pretty decent attack quite often. I think it's about eight, eight or so. And they've got about a defense of 20, just over. So they'd certainly give our generals a bit of a run for their money, but they, they're they not anything like cells. I still prefer to have the flat damage of a unit of cell swords than, you know, and also there's more of them, so. <laughs> uh, and also, for that matter, a lot of Breland's starting generals, they are, of course, hobbits, and hobbits are absolutely woefully rubbish in this game. They come with... Um, Bandabras archers. Now I think all of them because they no longer have the other units they used to have. I think there was Shire Militia. They were pretty decent. They had like 12 defense or something like that. And 10 attack but they've since been cut from the game. Right well let's just speed this up. We've killed enough of these and there we go. Right. And there goes Reginard. The noble warrior from Dorwinian. And, uh, of course, we it was a clear victory. It was never in doubt. Man, Graham, Raiders, 111, and Barrow White's 34. And we shall execute them all. Goodbye, Reginard. We hardly, hardly knew ye. <laughs> and Drangu is going to go on. There's not going to be anything here that he can't defeat. Uh, because he's just so disgustingly overpowered. Now, of course, many of you know, many of you may not know, that I do actually make lore videos in which uh, one of the perks, or the bad things, I suppose, depending on your uh, mindset, is that you actually get to see my not-so-lovely face. Um, and I actually thought about making a Barrowite video, or, or, like, what they, what they are, how they came to pass. But, you know... As as much as I'd like to, anything that's not in the films will have less of an audience because more people have seen the films than read the books. And uh, for that reason, they're kind of not 
going to be a topic just yet. But things like, I'm a bit of a history I, in like real life, I really do like history and things like talking about what Barrow Whites could have like. Of course, oh, Hoonborn, there's a bit of a biography for him, I think, where he, they'd talk about him being a wraith of Cardolan. And yeah, just here, I think he they said like, oh, he died in like 1400 or something of the Third Age. Christ, that really drops the frames. But like little things like this place here, I think this is meant to be like Tol Mor Morwen, where Morwen, the mother of um, Turin Turambar, um, where she died. Yes. I don't know where I was going with that. Oh yeah, so, you know, like in real life, I'll get onto the battle and very... In fact, I'll just, you know, so we've got some pikes there, we've got um, a ballista, and we've got Tamunzahar nobles. And I'll just keep loading screen in here while I talk, so you can skip there it if you want. Well, like, you know how in real life you go to some... Um, well, for instance, in, in Europe, you could go to, say, Auschwitz. Now, obviously, it's not a very nice place, but... Um, to be somewhere where such history occurred to someone that likes history that's that can be very interesting like this is where it happened 70 years ago and it's just something to imagine now in middle earth it's it's kind of obviously it's not real so that does kind of put a bit of a bummer on it but okay i just had a bit of a moment to try and gather my thoughts wouldn't it be great if, I don't know, in the Amazon series, they actually explored some of these lesser known regions and, I don't know, fleshed them out a little bit more. I don't know where I was going with it originally. I hope you got some value from that rant, but let's get on with the actual battle. So let's have all these guys on the front line and I could have just gone control I, picked all of the infantry units, but hey ho, there we go. And on the flank, let's just have these guys. They're going to do some running for us. What archers do we have? Oh, we've just got the basic Angmarim archers. They're going to be right there. And the Witch King, I think, is the only cavalry force. What are you? Oh, we've got two units of these. Oh, excellent. Right, pop you there. And the Witch King is going to go immediately out there and take out the blister. Everyone else, if you'd just like to march in that kind of direction... And in this battle, then, we do have some pikes. So, Jar Jar Binks, I'm going to show you, and anyone else that's interested, I'm going to show off the pike animation. Right, so, oh, they've got the Tamunzahar nobles right there. It's a bit of a pain. How about we just get everyone to run? Because I don't think, I don't think um, fatigue is something that we really have to be worried about. So, they've got they've got some of their pikes, we've got some of ours. The Witch King piles on in there, get back out. And let's slow this down a bit. So we've got halberdiers here. Oh yeah, we can show off halberdiers as well, show off how they're different. So, the Witch King made it out, that's good. Go in over there, you're going to flank them. And just go in there, oh yeah, so they've got pikes there. Do we not have pikes somewhere around here? Where are they? Oh, they're all the way over there. Um, well, we can send them in over there. And we'll use the dwarves as a good comparison. Do we have any units over there? No, we don't. Right, so get over here. And then charge in over here. You, our Iron Crown warriors. You, man, you're going to come and charge these pikes in the rear. And you two march forth like so. You come over here. You're going to go for the general. You're just shooting at whatever the hell you want. Right, yeah, just stop there. Right, is this good? I want to make sure that we're not in a bad position. So if I don't look at us for a moment. Right, well. Um, perhaps we could slow this down even more. Come down to half speed. So, if you look at these pikes just here, notice how they're prodding away at the enemy. They're keeping distance. This guy can't hit this guy. And he's just getting hit. They're getting staggered. Now he's coming for a hit, but the guy behind, he's poking him now. And he's already taken five hits before he even gets a chance to attack. And he's dead. 
That's how powerful pikes are. And if we look over here as well at our pikes, notice how we've got, we can have several men attacking the same unit. Now this guy has actually made it within the pikes. So that's quite good for him. He's actually attacking our man there, as you can see. But they'll take several hits before they make it in there, which is why, you know, defensively, these units are far better um, than the average. Right. I hope that kind of cleared it up a little bit. But I don't want to get our men flanked. Right, so the ballista's coming over there. And... Ow. Right, you go in over there. I mean, we basically won over here. But then let's also have a look at the halberdiers then. So the halberdiers, they are much shorter. And as you can see here... Whilst they do also do, like, the pokey animations, like that guy just there did... They also do this over-the-top swing. Now, over-the-top swing isn't as good because that allows the other unit to come forth. And they can actually parry that as well. Whereas the poke, they'll always get stab staggered by that. So it's kind of like a mix between a pike animation and like a two-handed axe animation, which is, is good. But, I mean, their stats aren't that good. I mean, they're set up for defense, but... They're not as good as defending as these guys. I think these guys will hold the line better than uh, these Iron Crown Halberdiers. They, of course, do have high defense, though, um, in general. But um, And they've also got uh, armor piercing, so they've got all that going for them. Right. Well, they've got Dwarven Laborers here. Come on over here, and let's speed this up again. And we've sandwiched the Ballista over there. And here you can see more pikes at work. So I hope this has answered the question a little bit. As you can see, yeah, it's very difficult to get in there. The enemy are badly bloodied. They have lost half their men. Right. Well, they've lost half their men. Should we just use Terror of the Witch King? That might send them all packing. Who knows? I think that ballista is sorted. We've won over here. If you'd all just go and charge those Firebade Warriors... Then it is just the Tamunzahar nobles left. And we're going to give these Dwarven laborers a charge in the rear. And I believe we've got some savages over here. You guys just run on over there. Same as you. And the Witch King has just smashed them. No wavering. Are they going to run away? They're not running away. Why aren't you running? Oh, probably because the general is still there. Right, and uh, I think it's probably okay for you guys to just stop firing because you're not going to get any kills. You're not going to get any kills at all. Right, so you're charging over there. You come round here so we can get some rear charges. And probably the Witch King is going to do that as well. How about you just... Do you have any free units over here? I mean, we're still kind of fighting someone here. It doesn't really matter, I suppose. Let's get a charge in the rear of these Timon Zahar nobles. Let's see how good the Witch King is against a proper, proper, high-tier, high-class unit. Might even take out the General. There's 47 of them. By the way, the Witch King's unit is not good at charging. Let's see how many we took out. 27. 26. Now, of course, when you charge a unit in the back like that, their defense skill means nothing. So that 12 doesn't do anything. They've only got 18 armor to help them out there. And we've got an attack of, what was it, 11, which is armor piercing. We've got an attack of 11 plus the charge bonus, which is 7. We've, that goes up to 18. The 18 armor slashed down to 9. 18 against 9. And just like that, there's only one left. <laughs> Excellent. So once he goes down, that'll be the end of that. Uh, so we can just speed this up. The enemy general. The enemy this is a clear victory. Excellent stuff. Clear victory. Who got the most kills? Oh, it was the Witch King. And execute them all, and that should be pretty much the Dwarven resistance gone. I mean, oh, they've got these two over here, I suppose. And so, what we could do then, maybe... Yes, my lord. Your will. Your I don't think... My lord. I don't think Morholt can leave. 
No, he can't. It's still 60%. So, more hope, yes, you're going to have to stay behind. And we're taking everything else. Well, actually, not everything else. We don't need everything else. We just need some. Because the Witch King, he can handle, you know, all of that. And I think that is the bulk of their army. So, the rest of this, this is just basically to garrison. Yes, and when I say garrison, they're going to come down here to Perth and Lund. They've got three units there. I think that's all we really need. We will get perhaps counterattacked by the High Elves. So that's something we may have to watch out for. But I think that's an okay-ish army. So you you just go into Gehuznor for now. And the Witch King, come down here. They're going to do some... Oh, wait. Those 83. We can send them back. They can be garrison. Yeah, we'll that's what how we'll do that. And Agendauer, then. You can yes, presumably man. leave. So we're going to take out Your these will, good units. Orders. Yep, he can. And we'll take them. Orders. And we'll take... Will, well, we'll take the more my numerous Lord. 190 there. We get some no mercenaries. And we won't chance it by taking any more units out of there. Two units is fine. Orders, my Lord. And... We'll march in like that. Wait, we, we didn't even look. Tomorrow. Oh, they got five units there. Um, well, given the fact that we've got Agendau, I think we'll be okay. We've got we've got enough men per battalion to outnumber them as well. Well, yeah. So that's going to happen next turn. Yes, that's going to be like two turns, um, presumably. Can I... Oh, I can't even try and see how what your movement range is. Well, yeah, it's two turns. So, two turns for that. Uh, the Witch King, we might just use him to plant some towers over here. Who knows? Might have a... Um, yeah, so two more turns and we'll wipe out the Dwarves of Ered Luin. Unless they've got some other region down here. Oh, they could have the Under Towers, couldn't they? Hmm. I hadn't thought about that. Yes, my lord. Well, I hope they don't. <laughs> that 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 is my plan. And we're just going to siege that out. Good thing that all the High Elves went in there. We don't have to worry about them. And But we do have some more units on the way down here to help us out. Oh, we've got an extra general here. Who's got more acumen? Well, if you leave... Did that go down? I think it went down. Yes, my lord. It doesn't really matter. They're both... Oh, he's really good in command. You come over here. I don't quite know what your task is going to be. I suppose you could command an army against Kamath Barin. Although you'll need a lot more units than that. You will need... You'll probably need all of these. So, these guys are going to go get that fat armor. Uh, I don't like... <laughs> there we go, finally. We'll get that really good armor. Or the best armor that we can provide. And re we shall train all of these. And, oh, that's all of our money. Um, yeah, well, they're necessary, and then we'll get those for armor. Oh, that didn't actually cost as much as I thought it did. Right, let's end the turn. And off we go for the next turn. So, oh, we, oh, okay, no, that's fine. Right, so Agendauer, uh, just shuffle along yes. in this direction. With honor. And let's have a look at what they've got in there. Perhaps we could just go in there. Yes. We'll ambush them if anything it. comes in that direction. Drangu's got... Some reinforcements here. They've got quite a lot of units in there, but they appear to all be heavily damaged. We've got Paladin there. He's got the Bandoba Soldiers and Ted. He's just got the Breland Bodyguard. Yeah. Oh, they do have some gatekeepers, though. They're, we'll have to watch out for them. Well, I don't think we really do, actually. Yes. Let's just... Oh, well, we'll have to wait on that one. The Lending's like us. That's good. Just, you know, so they don't attack us. Litash got the Master Mason's Hall. And with that, uh, you should get... Uh, what's a good unit or thing for you to get? I mean, the farming doesn't really benefit you at all. Perhaps just get a Wog Camp. And, yeah, you get the Wog Camp and then you'll get the second tier as well. Since it's further away, it's good to have the cavalry do that distance because, you know... They have extended movement range. Yes, my lord. Can we get some towers over here lord, as well? Uh, perhaps 
Like right there. That's a good place. And we could get some more over there, but I don't want to send him too far out of the way. And, um, hmm. What is Captain Istuyon doing? We could send these guys as reinforcements yes. down there, but I think, given the fact that they're not, they're not going to attack us, and even once we get to the seven turns or whatever, they'll be severely weakened at that point. I think we'll be able to manage them just fine. So Ooh. Inwa over here, we're going to send him into that yes. fort there. We're going to chance it a little bit there. We're going to chance it, because if they do besiegers, then obviously we're toast. But <laughs> I'm hoping they don't. I, I hope I hope they won't think about it like that. I think the yes, AI is a little bit limited in its thought processes sometimes. So let's come out of there with all of these. Sadly, oh, Morholt did have to remain. Oh, they, they quite like us even without a garrison. But, I mean, I don't know how long that's going to stay. Yes, we, oh, yeah, because we did exterminate everyone as well, didn't we? So, you come down here. Yes. Oh, for a second then. For a second then, I thought that is going to be a nasty surprise. But they got Clan Lord Gore. He comes out with his Gabilgathol guard. He's not been in a battle yet. So he's going to have like 114 of them. Heavily armoured men. And we could attack that. And draw out the garrison. But. If we do that. Of course, we'll get the... We'll get their last stand army a bit too soon. Next turn we can do that. So just go there. And you may or may not ambush them. Hopefully they stay there for one more turn. That will obviously benefit us massively. Hugely. It will be a huge boost. <laughs> and uh, they're probably our biggest enemy. So getting rid of them is going to help us out a lot. Now these Cav. Drangu Lord, doesn't... Really need them, although uh, we'll give them, we'll give fighting. over the uh, Warg Raiders because um, I don't think anti armor is all that useful against Bree because they've got absolutely no armor at all. And you then, we do need some more money. More money is always good in every walk of life. <laughs> I mean, you can never, you can't say, you can't turn down more money. You know, as long as it's not coming from nefarious causes. Uh, and, you know, you're okay to take it. Like, I don't, I don't know. I mean, in fact, it's not always good to take the money. Some t yes, I mean, there's all kinds of implications. <laughs> but for us, as the remnants of Angmot, we're going to take it all. We don't care whose it was. We'll just have it. We'll take it by force. We'll pay the iron price for the iron crown. And we shall end the turn. Oh, that sounded like a bad sound. Oh, did we fail a mission? Oh, I'm not e I'm not even bothered, mate. Not even bothered. Construction complete. For Hamgathol got its land clearance. Oh. I mean, that probably not a great thing. We... Because now the population is going through the roof. That I must say, that is probably the bad thing to the Dark Temple of Melkor. It's not that great. In the late game. Although that does actually provide some population bonus due to happiness. So that might be something that we should consider getting. But. Alas. Lord my Lord. These pesky dwarves yes. over here. They're, they're not doing as they're meant to be doing. <laughs> they've, they've come out here. And they're threatening uh, yes, Captain Lord. Haldir over here. Now, I think he could probably beat them. The he does only have one unit of Wog skirmishes, though. So, that's something I'm fearing a little bit. They've got four units in there now, but they would only train some um, Dwarven laborers there. So, I don't fear them that much. So, let's just besiege yes, these two. We shall oh, Clan Lord Gore's in there. Ah, I thought... So they've got an extra general just there. My Lord. Let's use our spy, bring him over here. What do they have here? Oh, Grindfarn. He's uh, the... Oh. Oh, I guess he's not. I thought he came with uh, the... They used to be called Obsidian Guard. I don't know what they're called now. Think, are they just called Grindfarn Reavers? Sorry? 
Anyway, we're going to go in and attack this. Bohol is in there. Ooh, he's got quite the force there. How's the uh, balance of power? It is in our favour. And Agandau should be able to beat Bohor himself. And yeah, we've got a unit of archers as well to take those down. Right, in we go. Muster your courage, men. I'd say this is a key battle. Because this is the beginning of the end for the dwarves. Or the end of the beginning. I suppose it's more like that, yeah. So you guys come over here. We're going to come from three points of entry here. And we'd really like to shoot the dwarven laborers, really. So perhaps we just bring the archers over here. Run them over. Run them over. We'll bring them around here. Then we can shoot to our heart's delight. We've got the pikes here. Once again with their OP animation. Uh, we'll pop them right there in the front. So anyone that comes towards them, we'll, we, we'll have them. In fact, let's go a bit further forward as well. So the thing you can do on this battle map as well is actually put archers right there and you can just shoot them directly. Um, probably should have done that actually. But we've got them coming over here and then shoot the Dwarven Laborers. Perfect target for us. They've got low armor. Even like not just for Dwarves, but for everyone. And we've got Angmarim infantry coming from over here. I don't want to send another unit round because might, uh, you know, we might be a bit thin. Right, so they're coming up against them. That's fine. We'll charge in. And we go further forward with our pikes, entice them into a bit of a bit of a battle. And Agandau, oh, he, he needs to get a move on. Come over here. I might send him where the archers are currently. So, we've got Tamuntahan. Ooh, Eredlu and Militia. Shoot them. They've got the, they haven't got their shields towards us. I mean, they're probably going to move now. As soon as we... Or not. They're just wavering between... Okay, now they're moving. Yeah. Couldn't tell if they were just changing formation or not. Those Angmarim infantry, they're doing quite well. And in fact, if they all go in that direction, I'm okay with that. Because we could just shoot them from over here. Now, of course, these guys have got their shields kind of towards us. So there's no point firing at them. But this is a really big target. Now, our accuracy is not the best. So sending, you know, sh letting them shoot at a very large target. That's obviously going to go quite well. So let's just speed this up. There's nothing really else to report here. Someone's getting charged. Oh, it's just those... Oh, ooh, that was a bit... bit dodge. We've only lost about 30 men in our Angmarim infantry there. But we've taken out a lot of dwarves. 30% already down. That is excellent. How much armor do these Firebeard Warriors have? Oh, let's shoot them then. So they're going to be a bit of a pain to deal with, I think, as well. Let's go a bit further forward. I wonder if we could just... Because now we can kind of facilitate a bit of a battle here. Uh, they're not moving. Well, they're moving, but just not towards us. Where is the point in which I can place these pikes? Come over here, then. Can I just... Right, yeah, that's okay. Okay, just just fight them. That's fine. We've got the thralls coming. Where's Agandau? He's coming over here. Yeah, I think it's best to use him to flank. We don't need to set him head on. We can pick our fights a lot better. We're almost out of ammunition. Just throw the rest of your lot in over there. And the pikes. They're just going to hold these guys back for presumably a very long time. Fingers crossed anyway. That's the plan. And they're out of ammunition. Okay, so Agandau is coming over here. Um, There's still a lot of them. Let's bring these fellas around here. We're going to just run them. We don't need to be perfect here because this is... They're not going to have any reinforcements coming in this direction. So the pikes just hold on there. We might send in the thralls. Yeah, just send the thralls in because our pikes are getting beaten. Agandau is on hand. We don't want to send him in there just yet because they've got the Firebeard Warriors there as well and they're armor-piercing. He's got a lot of armor. 
you'd get smashed. You might get beaten over there, actually, as well. Right, Angmar infantry there. I think now... Let's send the archers in. I don't, I don't want to take any chances here. Let's use Black Hand of Mordor as well. Let's reduce some of that. Uh, combat capability and morale and things like that. And now that he's engaged, we can... We could go in up against those militia there, but no, we're gonna go. We're gonna go to war over here. Did I? Did I? Oh, clicked a, a wrong unit, but no charge here. Oh, is there gonna be a charge? No charge. Well, it's a bit of a letdown. Let's just speed this up. Agandau should be able to beat them. It would just take a very long time. But are we gonna win over here? No, we're not. So, that's a bit of an oof. These guys should win, and the archers are just here to... Well, they're kind of here to die, so that Agandau can kill. <laughs> yeah, these Angmarin infantry, they fought really well. They fought to last man, in fact. But they are going to lose. They... Uh, yeah, the 17 and 3 Dwarven laborers over here. Who are we even fighting? Um, there's someone here still fighting. Right, the thralls, you go over there. Pikes, just come over here. How are the Firebeard Warriors doing up against the Angmar Infantry? They actually only started with about 70, so they've actually massacred us, obviously. I mean, they are a lot better. We'll just go in and fight them. Agandau is doing reasonably well. And uh, let's just have a look at where where he is because that can sometimes be a cause for a concern but it is not today he's right there with his interesting looking swords and the Tamazahar noble is getting slowly whittled down excellent and we have completely surrounded the stunted over here the stunted the stunted ones the stunted ones <laughs> can't speak and it's only a matter of time they they those thralls are rubbish. They've still not killed all of those all those laborers. There's five of them. I mean, they'll they'll flee once we kill the general, which is very very shortly, I'd imagine. There's still one left. We, we might even take the town square before he dies. Oh, well there he is. Well, that's the end of the battle then. They're going to run. Excellent. So that's the first settlement down. 175 Angry Infantry. They went they went one for one. I mean, yeah, a bit better even. That's not too bad up against Dwarves. And they got quite a lot of healing. Pikes did pretty well. But the Archers actually got the most kills. And down goes Oskelon. Now... That's not victory. fantastic, and I think we're going to need to get a spy down here. Oh, and it's nice that we've actually got the facilities for that, because, of course, now we do border Mithlond over here, and there is definitely the chance that some more High Elves will come to attack us. And... Yeah. Now, Agandau is actually still our faction leader, even though he's yes, kind of Lord. not, in a way, but... Uh, should we go for Camduath? Your should we just go down to Hobbiton? Yes. I mean, they're not going to come and attack us, are they? So, let's just um, go into those trees. Hopefully, it will be an ambush. But if not, we'll take Hobbiton and take out Bilbo. Good old Bilbo. And, yeah, that's kind of that. We've got some more men over here. They can... We will send all these guys over here. I don't think we need to send them up against the dwarves anymore. I think the dwarves are done. At least those ones. We've got other dwarves coming over here. They actually asked for a trade agreement over the course of the end turn. Expected me to pay 230 gold coins for the pleasure of. I did not fancy it. So, um... Approaching. Come and get ah. Coward. I will only address you. Yes. I don't know if we can beat both of these. Um, Be gone. They've got some Amanyar Swordmasters there. We know how good they are. And they've got some Sindar Archers. We've got no... We've got very limited cavalry. 
I don't think we can expect to beat particularly those. Look at that attack. And there's 114 of them. Yeah, we may have to pull out of this maybe for a bit. I don't think we've lost two. We've lost three turns on that. Sadly. Yes, my lord. Oh, and they're even going for Warg Warren. But if they do that, we might be able to get Kamath Brind. So, you know, yes. it's not the end of the world. Perhaps if we go in there, that'll give them a bit of a feeling like, oh, we need to go back to Kamath Brind. Oh, just got some, like, Mr. Des Mr. Destructoid <laughs> noises in my ear. <laughs> um, but I don't know. This This laptop is perhaps falling apart on me. And I feel like it's perhaps holding me back a little bit. So I'm I, I'm definitely thinking for the end of the year to uh, build myself that new PC that Whoa, I keep talking about. Lord. But I think for now, I'm going to end it here. I was thinking, let's go and take Perth and Lun. But that could be a nice way to signify the end of Ered Lewin. We've got their faction leader in there. And if we take that... And then go and besiege um, Doran's Halls over here. Perhaps we'll have a very big battle with the remnants of these folks over here. And then those four units in there as well. And take them out. And of course, we'll have a decision to make. Do we remain here and almost certainly get attacked by Captain Istuion? And try and fight Aragorn that way? Or, hmm. And what's going to happen over here? So, thank you very much for wa uh, watching. All the way to the end. And I hope, um, Jar Jar Binks, you got the answer that you were looking for. And thank you very much to Dabakrada and One Moment. Troll for jokes. Brad, thanks for commenting. I'm going with Gandalf. Good day.